This week's edition of NJBIA's Minding Your Business is brought to you in part by AT&T, helping family, friends, and neighbors connect in meaningful ways every day. From the first phone call 140 years ago to mobile video streaming today, AT&T innovates to improve lives. New Jersey's community colleges aligning education to build an innovative workforce. Find out how your business can join and benefit at njpathways.org and by New Jersey Business Magazine, providing the critical information needs for New Jersey's business community for more than 65 years. Welcome to NJBIA's Minding Your Business. I'm your host, Bob Considine. Well, cyber attacks are on the rise, which means businesses, large and small, really need a strong cybersecurity strategy to reduce their risk exposure. Bindu Sundresan is the director of AT&T Cybersecurity and a foremost authority on how organizations can best protect themselves, and she's here with us today. Bindu, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Bob. All right, so before we get into the lay of the land in mm -hmm. cybersecurity, AT&T Cybersecurity provides certain uh, services for businesses. What are they? So we provide cybersecurity services, large and small businesses mm -hmm. across all verticals. And we do everything that you can think of in cyber, whether it be to help you with your compliance, to help you deal with the threat actors, right. to help you with managed security services, and really take this complex cybersecurity challenge, simplify it by bringing you solutions that work, and work for you. All right. You know, cybersecurity is this huge area now. And I think we were talking before the show, you said you were into this before it was cool. Uh -huh. um, when we talk about cybersecurity, is it a matter of the bad guys just getting smarter? Is it a more complex uh, security landscape out there? Why is this so, such a big deal now? So I think it's um, innovation is a double-edged sword, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, we have started using technology much more in our day-to-day -day lives, right. as well as within organizations. So security used to always be thought of as like perimeter security, right? So right. security behind your four walls, but now it's all changed. So does the bad actor have a leg up? You know what? The bad actor has to only get it right once, whereas the good guys have to get it right all the time. That's a great uh, point. Yeah, and think about it, you know, they don't have to deal with the bureaucracy, the process, the compliance, the framework, the structure. Right. You just have to, you know, be able to exploit a vulnerability once. So almost equate it to, a, you know, think of it, the defense guys will win all the, th will win the war. Right. The offensive guys will probably be winning the near-term battle. Got so it. they're not winning yet. I got it. That's a great point. It's a great yeah. analogy. Um, did things get more complicated in the space due to COVID because there was more digital marketplace activity going on? Yeah, and I think, yes, COVID definitely made every organization and every user right. transform, right? right. Uh, did you think you'd be ordering, you know, food, you know, using the delivery model that we have today? Right. Every or day. grocery, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, sitting at a restaurant today with a QR code? No. Right. So has it made it more complicated? Yes, we've had to transform and shrink our, let's say, 18, 24 month plans right. to like, you know, a couple of weeks, right? But we've done well, you yeah. know, as I would say, this pandemic has taught us to be resilient. Yeah. We are all, you know, uh, also starting to value the fundamentals, right? So technology has to make our lives better, improve it, whether it is in retail, whether it is in government, whether it's in, you know, uh, hospitals, healthcare, name it. So yes, does it have to do with security upfront? Yes, it right. is about maintaining trust. So we want to keep it top of mind. What are some of the trends you're seeing in terms of cybersecurity challenges for businesses? I think the advanced threat landscape where things are constantly changing. Mm. You are innovating, you have new assets, you have assets in the cloud, you're right. using new applications, you have generational users that are working for you. You have the novices in technology, you have the natives in technology, all of them working for you. Yeah. So it's, it's truly a people problem intertwined with the technology backdrop, right. right? So that's really what's happening. And I, sometimes I'm thinking people are so into what they're doing with work. If they get some kind of phishing email, they could be susceptible, right? 
Definitely. And think about it. How many of us, uh, while through this pandemic, you've been asked for fundraisers, you've been asked for UPS packages that are waiting, right? You right. have, it's no longer the Nigerian prince and the phishing email. Yeah. There's no spelling mistakes. It's a well-crafted, right. you know, phishing attempt at you. And key is, they're going to social engineer you, right? right. So think of the basics, right? You're right. out of office messages. Right. It shouldn't be revealing all types of information about all the hierarchy within your organization. Right. You shouldn't be using the same user user ID and password for your Amazon account, LinkedIn account, and your corporate email, right. right? So things like that. So is it complicated? Yes. But is it something that cannot be solved for? No. Right. I guess I should get rid of the word password for password at this yes. point. Um, and you know, you mentioned social engineering. That's when uh, you're kind of um, tricked into divulging mm -hmm. confidential information, yeah. correct? Um, how about, you know, you mentioned, I did get a, uh, a bad, um, effort uh -huh. in terms of uh, fishing. Yeah. I guess there's many fish in the sea. So one of them I got today. Ooh. Yes. And it came from my boss. Wow. And I wrote it down because I, I was it was almost laughable. Uh -huh. It said, uh, I, hey, Bob, I need you to take care of something for me. Write back if you're available. Uh -huh. And it spelled right, R-I-G-H-T. <laughs> that's, that's a good call, right? <laughs> yeah. So what I did was I just gave him my credit card information. Oh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. And you know, think about it. You know, it's, it, you made a good point there, right? See, when you're going about our day-to-day -day job, yeah. do we always have security in our minds? Yeah. We may not, but the key is to have it. Equate it to safety, right? You're, you're always concerned about your safety yeah. wherever you are. Same thing, you should always be concerned about security. And if each of us do our part, right? I call it, let's do our part, be yeah. cyber smart, right? Like yeah. now it's a given, right? right? So you caught that phishing attempt, yeah. right? And you caught it with just that, mm -hmm. right? So there are people that get these emails about sending invoices, making payments, Big right? Uh, yeah, and the sense of urgency, yeah. especially in our hybrid environment now. I can't just come to you and say, hey, Bob, did you also get this email from yeah. your boss that said this, right? right. I can't oh, yeah. do that. They I would have to call you. That. They yeah. always encourage that. They make a call or go yeah. go over to the person. Double check, that. right? Yeah. You shouldn't be getting a call from the help desk asking you for your credentials. Just mm -hmm. like you shouldn't be getting a call from a bank saying, give me your password, right? right. It, it applies to not only financial information. I think somewhere along the line, when we think security, we think, oh no, my credit card should not be swollen. Right. It's beyond that, right? It's not about your credit card because there you can actually get another credit card right. and you can run a credit card check when it happens to be personal information that I can use now to craft things that says hey I'm just going to sound like Bob act like Bob in right. this email and craft it and send that's mm -hmm. how they're using that information right, right? got it and one of the more serious things that we were also talking before the show is ransomware mm -hmm. what is it so you call it the I saw it on one program the smash and grab of cyber crime. Yeah, pretty much. What right. And it? you know, today if you think about ransomware, right, it's one of those uh threats that has been out there, it's not new at all, decades, right? Yeah. But it's getting so much visibility because we are falling for it and paying that ransom. Yeah. And the malicious actor is making the money. And it's also available as a service today. So, right. you know, you don't have to be extremely skilled to execute this. Right. And it's also folks on the defense side, leaving vulnerabilities open, not patching, using outdated software, not really upgrading your devices and operating systems, right? right. You're, you're making it easy for the malicious actor to exploit you. Right. So it is the smash and grab of cybercrime today. It is something that is extremely monetarily beneficial for the bad actor. Right. So we should do our part. And really, most of these attacks happen with phishing email clicks. So stop. Think before you click. Right. Think before you click. And you know, I've also heard you use the term end user. Mm -hmm. Is that basically the pe person at the computer? Every one of us. We're, we are all end users, yeah. right? right? Um, let's talk more about the importance of business protecting itself. And I, I always wonder if, like, sometimes there's maybe an intimidation factor for business to even like get into this. Mm -hmm. uh, technical world. Yeah. Do you find that sometimes? Yes, definitely. Right. Uh, I always call cybersecurity a team sport. You mm. don't have to go at it alone. Right. right. It's a complex you know, challenge. Right. It feels intimidating. It feels like how much of a money you spend on it, you can't seem to get a handle of it. Yeah. That's where you think of using as a service. Just like the bad guys use crimeware as a service, you can get cybersecurity as a service. Right. It can all be taken care of for you in an affordable manner. And you can keep focusing on you and your core of your business. 
use technology and cybersecurity as a service. If you're a business, you don't really generate your own electricity unless that's what you do for a living. Right, right. Same way, you yeah. use facilities, use cybersecurity as a service. So you don't get overwhelmed by all these things that you have to take care of. Right, and you mentioned uh, the affordability part, which is great at AT&T cybersecurity, but also, also you tell me there's a, there's a skills gap in this yeah. industry a little bit. Yeah. So you're kind of taking care of that. Um, Definitely. Uh, by having such a huge team, right? Yeah, and the thing is we have the ability as AT&T mm -hmm. to you know, constantly keep up with the security threats, constantly groom our resources right. for the latest skills needed in security. Mm -hmm. And we are able to service all types of customers, right? The larger, the smaller, and achieve that scale. Make it something that you can afford, make it something that you can reap the value of, without having to invest all of it in-house. So think about it, you're you're getting the right tools, you're getting the right people, and it's all taken care of for you with your team's ability to view what you need to do to be able to make changes, mm -hmm. but you don't have the overwhelming burden of this complexity and having to do it all yourself and keeping up with the skill shortage. Even if you wanted to do it in-house, you may not be able to go get all the talent you need. Mm -hmm. And you know, how can cybersecurity is a broad area, right? Yeah. How can you find somebody who's an expert in compliance and cloud and you know all the associated backgrounds for it mm -hmm. in one person? Right. You really cannot. So you need a set of people. We give that to you. Right? And I'm almost wondering if you're when you're talking to a business, not that you're trying to scare them, but you do want to let them know. You've probably heard anecdotal or seen anecdotal things um, where a company's really lost hard mm -hmm. because they didn't have the right security. Yeah, and I would I would say this, right? So think about the millions of dollars that are spent post a breach, mm -hmm. right? It's not only, oh, it's right. the compliance fines, it's most businesses go down, 60% of small businesses are supposed to go down after a breach, yeah. right, within six months. So the amount of money that you actually end up spending after a breach has happened and the ability for you to regain that trust of your consumer is fairly right. you know, slim, you are better off spending that money upfront on security. And fundamentally, I think this is a risk issue. Every morning we wake up, we take risks. I decide you know, if this cup of coffee is too hot for mm -hmm. me or just right. right. So think of this as a fundamental risk in a discussion. Can you risk your reputation? Can you risk right. losing your customer's data? Can you risk having your website going down? Can you risk risk not having the ability to sell your product? Right. Can you risk all that? Because fundamentally, security is going to tie to your business outcome. You know, a website not being available mm -hmm. because of a denial of service attack. Right. What What is the problem? Right. It's not you're going to lose your business. All the consumers that were going to come there that time cannot. Mm -hmm. Right. So think of why are you doing security? Because you are trying to reduce your risk. And you're doing it really for the outcome of productivity, revenue growth, and earning your customer base, right? So that's right. really what everybody is in this game for. Right, and, and you guys, if, if you engage with a company, you give them all this information, make it easy for them, correct? Yes, definitely. You know, we are in this business and we've been doing security uh, for a long time. And even before terms like big data came into the yeah. picture, at and has been doing that. Right. And I truly believe, you know, we are one of those companies we have the experience. We are a large retailer. Right. We are an entertainment company. We are a telecom company, right? We have mm -hmm. so many people that work for us. Right. So, you know, we know what it takes to build a brand and to secure that brand and to keep that yeah. brand successful yep. with innovation. Yep. So we don't want to come at it from the point of no, right? Like, oh, security means, oh, I can't do this. No, it's about doing it right with that security mindset upfront. Right. So very good. Uh, so people, folks want to learn more about this, all they have to do is go to cybersecurity.att.com and hopefully, if any luck, you get hooked up with the Bindu Sundarasan Director of at and Cybersecurity. Thank you so much for being Thanks, here. Thanks, Bob. This is a great discussion. Great. And we'll be back right after these words. Okay, at at and everyone gets our best deals on all smartphones. Let me break it down. You got your new customers. They get our best deals. You got your existing customers. They also get our best deals. Everyone gets the deals. Questions? Got it. But why did you use a permanent marker? Because I want to make sure you remember. I'm going to get a new whiteboard. It's not complicated. Only AT&T gives everyone our best deals on every smartphone, like the Samsung Galaxy S21 5G for free. You're first. First to respond. First to put others' lives before your own. And in an emergency, you need a network that puts you first. 
that connects you to technology and each other, that's built with and for first responders. FirstNet, the only officially authorized wireless network for first responders. Because putting you first is our job. Welcome back to NJBI's Mind Your Business. I'm Bob Considine. Well, one tenet of Girl Scout law is to make the world a better place. And our next guest today is someone who's been making the world a better place for so many Girl Scouts for nearly a decade. Her name is Jenny Hill, and she is the CEO of the Girl Scouts of Central and Southern New Jersey. Jenny, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Bob. And you brought a special guest today. This is Olivia Altador from Troop 60640 in Central New Jersey, correct? Yes, that's correct. Olivia, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so Ginny, we'll start with you first. I mentioned at the outset, nine years with the Girl Scouts mm -hmm. of um, Central and Southern New Jersey. What's your journey been over these nine years and uh, what changes have you seen? Wow, well, um, you know, I joined the organization in 2013 and it was at a time when Girl Scouting was really looking at bringing technology yeah. into our membership processes to mm. use as a tool for registration and for engagement. And, you know, we, we came through that, we really modernized a lot of our business model, uh, took a couple of years and spent a lot of effort contemporizing our program offerings. Mm -hmm. So today we're, everything you know about Girl Scouts, we're camp, we're cookies, we're crafts, right. but we're also amazing badge programs that girls can do in topics like cybersecurity. Right. Um, and then the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, I think what we saw and what we learned about our organization is is really that the social interactions between girls as they're part of the Girl Scout troop and the mm -hmm. organization are so critical yeah. and that we really are a social and emotional wellness lifeline for so many girls. Mm -hmm. And so emerging out of pandemic, um, all those same things are true, but now we're really looking as we go forward to how do we take all that we've learned during these last two years uh, two and a half years really, yeah. and and even more so use technology as an enabler mm -hmm. um, to make sure we can grow and bring more girls into our organization. Got it. Got it. And Olivia, how long have you been with the Girl Scouts? I've been a Girl Scout for about eight years now. Eight and years? So you yes. guys are almost neck and neck here. <laughs> almost. <laughs> um, what made you get into it? Um, I think it's mainly just like the core values that Girl Scouts provides, even at a troop level. Right. Uh, there's a lot that you can learn from being with your troop leader and just being able to be surrounded in an environment where it's all girls working towards big things such as like entrepreneurship. You right. know what I mean? Like selling cookies at a young age. We learn how to handle our money properly. So I think it was that. And like ambition that kind yeah. of drove me to wanting to be a Girl Scout. Well, that's great. And you stuck with it. That's awesome. Yeah. This is the 110 <laughs> year anniversary of the Girl Scouts, right? 110 years. So yeah. big celebrations all year round. For this? All year round. So we're, we started <laughs> in March on oh, March 12th was our annual. Um, that's our annual birthday day. Right. Uh, birth of the organization. We started the celebrations and we're going to carry them through to next summer. Right. Um, one of the things that Olivia is going to be part of is um, she's a newly elected national council delegate. Oh, wow. Every three years, Girl <laughs> okay. Scouts from around the country uh, come together in right. uh, July 2023. We'll be yeah. descending upon right. Orlando, mm -hmm. um, some 10 to 20,000 of us mm -hmm. from all across the country. And so that'll be really the culmination of the year-long celebration. Right. Yeah. And you know, you hit on cookies and I'm sure we will get to cookies, <laughs> mm -hmm. believe me. Oh, we will. We, we need to. We need to. Uh, but for 110 years, I think the mission of that has kind of gone well beyond that. I, re I, I overheard something you uh, said in an interview. It said, uh, uh, it's a safe place for girls to be when they want to discover themselves. Mm -hmm. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I think the easiest way to describe it is to just really tell you a little about my own Girl Scout story. Mm -hmm. So um, I now know, reflecting back on my childhood, that it was at Girl Scout summer camp that I learned to get outside my comfort zone mm -hmm. and that that could be good for me. Right. And, you know, it's little experiences like that, seemingly little, in. In, a, in the life of a girl, when she's a youth in that safe space right. with with other girls where, you know, she doesn't have to worry about whether she succeeds or fail. It's really about the journey. Right. And, 
you know, the, the girls um, need a place where they can really explore a breadth of topics. You know, Girl Scouting is very broad. There's all kinds of badge yeah. programs and activities that you can do as a Girl Scout. And that gives them a chance to try a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of the other thing. And then through that, really develop their own sense of authenticity, who yeah. they are and their voice and what they care about. Yeah. So I look back now and, and say, well, that was the moment that I, learned that I could get out my outside of my comfort zone, which mm -hmm. the specific example for me was canoeing in the lake, which okay. I had never done. <laughs> um, I fell over lots of times. Yeah. Um, right. I just got back in the boat, you right. know, with a lot of encouragement. <laughs> right. um, and by the end of the week, I was pretty decent at it. It's still not my favorite right. activity, right. right? But that's right. okay. You still got and time I, to I, I had time to learn out. it, right? right? right. And, and then I also learned um, leadership and sort of civic activism. I did mm -hmm. a lot of organizing of, of community service when I was right. a Girl Scout, and that mm -hmm. has definitely played forward in, in my entire life. Okay. Now, for you, Olivia, mm -hmm. I don't know what age you started. I, mm -hmm. I'm going to guess. I was around seven. Seven, okay. Yeah. So you probably weren't <laughs> At that age, like, well, I, I need to figure out who I am at age seven. <laughs> but I mean, as you've gone through it, has mm -hmm. that been part of the journey? Of course. Yeah. Girl Scouts, you know, as you've you know alluded to before, is a major part in development. Mm -hmm. So there's no like, you're going to figure out exactly what you need to do forever now. But it's, mm -hmm. it's fa uh, foundational things and mm -hmm. it helps you to, you know, build on some of your morals. Like Girl Scouts has definitely built... Um, you know, a go-getter mentality for me. Right. And that's something that I've installed since age seven and kept with me till now. Right. So yeah, it, it kind of leads up to that. And you know, of course, as you get into other opportunities within Girl Scouts, such as media girls or being a national council delegate, right. um, you know, that can expand your horizons mm -hmm. and start to build those goals that you're looking forward to. And what are media girls? Should I? Uh... Yes. Okay. So media girls is so exciting. Mm -hmm. I've been a part of it since 2018. Okay. Um, which is when it you know started but media girls are girl scouts from different counties and they come together to represent girl scouts um, as an organization mm -hmm. through many different forms of media whether that's like print ads or radio shows mm -hmm. tv or TV, like TV. Like TV. Yeah. Sit here. <laughs> <laughs> um and so yeah we've been able to mm -hmm. explore so many different kinds of media and it's been amazing that's great right. and I, I assume part of your time with this is just developing great great friendships too yes right? yes that is a major major part of it mm -hmm. whether you're doing troop work or even in media girls like uh in my troop obviously we built such a close bond right. and then also in media girls you're meeting girls from all over um and so you really can like build connections everywhere it's yeah. amazing yeah. that's great um and for you jenny when you talk about what girls can get out of this what are five components i know positive Positive reinforcement for yourself as well. Positive sense. So the mission is current to build courage, confidence, and mm -hmm. character mm -hmm. to make the world a better place, right? Okay. And so everything maps back to those three C's. So mm -hmm. the confidence building comes from trying things, um, learning what you like, um, being in a collaborative environment where in that Girl Scout troop, you know, the girls are, it's a girl-led adult facilitated experience. Mm -hmm. So the role of the troop leader and adult volunteers is really to guide the girls to, to build consensus, right? And so you learn how to use your voice to advocate for what you want. You know, right. do you want to go camping or you want to go roller skating? Right, or, right, right. you know, we want to do this badge or that badge. Mm -hmm. Um, they, um, the courage comes from that sense of risk taking and mm -hmm. trying things and having experiences that are uniquely Girl Scouts, uh, where you can, um, you can learn new things and kind of stretch yourself. And then the character building is really one of the core principles upon which, um, we were founded, you know, Girl Scouting was built to give, uh, girls, a, a, a place to serve the community, um, to do acts of, of service, um, to in to have a place they can invest in themselves. And mm -hmm. so those three C's together, that's what makes girls who are leaders, mm -hmm. um, who are go-getters, mm -hmm. uh, like Olivia said, and who make the world a better place. So that's, it all comes together that way. That's great. And you, you hit on volunteerism a little bit, Jenny. Um, I feel like in every organization, vol getting volunteers can be a challenge. How about for the Girl Scouts? Well, it certainly, um, it certainly is a challenge because people have lots of ways they can spend their time. Yeah, um, but right. 
uh, good, good gracious, without our volunteers at Girl Scouts, we wouldn't be able to do the amazing things right. that we do. So, um, you know, collectively, we probably have about 400 Girl Scout professionals across right. the state of New Jersey mm -hmm. and probably 40,000 volunteers yes. who give a little bit of time. Right. Uh, in some cases, maybe as a parent helper or as a coach for the Media Girls program. Mm -hmm. And then our amazing, dedicated troop leaders who you know, commit to working over the course of a whole Girl Scout year with the troop and helping them to unfold all the amazing experiences. Right. I was looking at my paper because I remember somewhere you said episodic volunteers. Episodic volunteers, so, yeah. People are not in it 100%. Correct, but they, but they, Correct. But they yeah. They just need a little bit, right? They just, right. And, just as and important. Just yeah. as important. Right. And right now, because of the breadth of the curriculum that we have in our badge programs, we really have a need for subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. So people who, um, everything from, you you know, our sewing and music badges um, to our cybersecurity right. and environmental science badges. Mm -hmm. You know, we need people with the expertise who are willing just to, to volunteer to help a troop or volunteer at a council run program mm -hmm. and deliver um, some of those badge activities. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I almost wonder, Olivia, at some point, well, I'll ask you first, have you really bonded with a volunteer over your mm -hmm. years? Like one, one person in particular who was like, mm -hmm just great for you. And the other question I have for you is, can you imagine as an adult, maybe you volunteering uh, mm -hmm. for Girl Scout? Well, uh, through my experience as a Girl Scout, I've met many volunteers mm -hmm. and a lot of mentors as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think my troop leaders and troop parents as well, because, you know, right. being a troop parent is very involved and uh, we just appreciate them so much. So I would say all of the troop parents right. in my troop, uh, I appreciate so, so much. And as far as um, me being a Girl Scout and, you know, continuing Girl Scouts, once you're a Girl Scout, you yeah. are always a Girl Scout. <laughs> That's true. Uh, you know, it's a lifetime, yeah. it's a lifetime thing and it's amazing. So I definitely see myself becoming involved, whether it's uh, locally or, you know, ex it, even expanding my horizons, continuing, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, kind of in the path that I'm looking forward to, which is, you know, doing national work. Um, right. So yeah, I would love to always be involved with Girl Scouts in any way that I, I can. I have a feeling you definitely will. <laughs> and, and folks out there who are interested, they do want to um, uh, volunteer with the Girl Scouts of uh, Central and Southern New Jersey. It's What's the website? GS? So um, the easiest thing to go is girlscouts.org. So then okay. no matter where you are in our viewing uh, area, right. you can go to Girl Scouts. Uh, girlscouts.org, uh, put in your zip code and figure out exactly where you need to connect so that you can mm -hmm. get engaged locally right where you live. Right. Okay. Now, before we run out of time, we got to hit on the cookies here. <laughs> First question for you, Olivia. Yes. When it's cookie t season, Yes. Uh, how popular do you become? Oh <laughs> my gosh. I swear I get 50 new notifications that I've never seen before. Uh, no, but yeah, it, a lot of people can just feel the cookie season coming. <laughs> like it's like a, a holiday season. Right, right. Um, and you know, a lot of people reaching out. Uh, it, it's definitely exciting to see it every year. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and um, Jenny, you are part of the National Girl Scout Cookie Task Force. I am. Which is a $900 million cookie program. Is yeah, that's nationally. So okay. the Girl Scout cookie is actually one of the top selling right. uh, cookies in the country, right behind Oreo and Chips Ahoy, believe right. it or not, uh, even mm -hmm. though we only we don't sell for 12 months out of the right, year. Right. Wow, and, that's a statement. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it is. And so the National mm -hmm. Cookie Steering Committee uh, focuses on two things. One is we uh, always hold true to our core, which is the reason for the cookie program is mm -hmm. because it is an entrepreneurship program right. and a skill builder for girls. Mm -hmm. So um, we always make sure that we're innovating that program to keep it contemporary so girls are learning best practices in right. marketing and selling and money management and all the things that go behind it. Right. And then the second part is we uh, we mind the store of the operational side of the cookie program. Okay. And um, one of the best parts of being on that committee is that um, we're involved in the future product development. And so it takes about two and a half years right. to bring a new cookie to market. That's exciting. And so I always know what's mm -hmm. coming down the pike, but I right. can't tell you because right. I've signed an NDA. I was so. going <laughs> to ask you, I figured that was off, off, That's right. off guard. But I should tell you that the NJBI lobbying team, lobbying team is now working on a bill uh, so we have in New Jersey uh, thick mints, 
Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> the thin ones are just not enough. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, uh, Ginny Hill, Olivia Altidore, thank you so much for being here. If folks want to learn more about the Girl Scouts of South Central and Southern New Jersey, you can go to gsscsnj.org. Ladies, thank you so much. Thank for you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. And thank you all for joining us on NJBI Finding Business. See you next time.